Parents of Reddit. What's your best example of reversed psychology on your kids that actually worked? One of my best friends through childhood used to be punished with no salad if she misbehaved. She cherishes salad now and would always try to eat as much as possible during school lunch. Coincidentally, her now husband used to be punished with no books. It had the same effect. I think it's hilarious that they'd be hitting the salad bar and library like some black market their narc parents couldn't reach her. <laughs> My dad once made the mistake of telling me that his parents never balked at his college expenses if he was spending his money on books. Well, I adore reading I always have and you better believe I spent way more money at Barnes & Noble than your average 18-22 year old. And not just on coffee or junk all books. All the time. I'm 35 and still lugging them around. My mom similarly fostered a love of reading by not protesting about buying me books. Other random crap I might have to convince them to get me. New Animorphs book came out. Instant buy. No questions asked. Though probably the weirdest divide was it was extremely easy for me to get new PC games. Or even a new PC for gaming. Or new graphics card or whatever I needed but it was always an uphill battle to get a new console. I haven't quite figured out why. But I suspect it might have been because the consoles were only for gaming and you couldn't do anything else with them. Whereas the PC was also useful beyond gaming. My mom would tell me she only lets me eat soup after candy and she'd only buy me candy that I didn't like. After a few times, I stopped trying and begged her to let me eat soup first. She gave me a smirk and told me go ahead. This doesn't sound as evil as it was. But trust me I suffered. So what was the candy? When I was a kid I refused to get up in the morning. My mom said we were going to trick my dad into thinking I was still asleep. So she made me put on clothes and then hide under the covers and pretend to be asleep. Then my dad would come in to wake me up and I would fool him because I was already dressed and ready. This worked on me for years and I never questioned it. In hindsight it's pretty obvious that my parents just wanted me to get dressed without a fuss. When I was a kid I refused to get up in the morning. I'm in my 20s and I still do this. My uncle used to say quick. Before I give you a dollar. We would all run like mad to do whatever it was. I've used this on my kids and the look of confusion on their faces is all worthwhile. The cycle continues. Was the dollar supposed to be a carrot or a whip? I may be lost in the languorous barrier here. He's saying do something fast before I give you this dollar. Kids here do this in dollar. So they rush to do it. After they've done it. It's too late they already did whatever he asked them to do so they don't get to have the dollar. P. I have a 3.5 year old. He picked up the word arc. Anytime he said it. I would calmly walk over grab a fork and bring it to him after a few times he thought he was just mispronouncing the work and dropped it all together a guy i know trolled some kids in ukraine a similar way this conversation happened in ukrainian and russian kids notice foreigner start loudly trying out english swears guy i know confused look i don't speak german a kid a couple more swears Less confidently Jake. Annoyed look I already told you. Kid. I don't speak German. Kid. It's English. I saw it on TV. Jick. They don't know anything on TV. I'm a freaking American. And those are not our words. Kid. Dot. Oh. Dot. How do you swear in English? Jick. I don't know if I should teach you this. It's a really dirty word. Kids. Teach. 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 Jick. Okay. Don't say this around your parents. Got it? Switches to English love. Couple days later. He sees the kids again. Kid. Hey. Love you. You loving sack of love. No. You cannot take this after school science extracurricular activity. They have robots. Lasers. Explosions. And other dangerous stuff like that. I bet you can't. Both of them hate the assertion that they are not capable of doing something. Can you put your toys away? Will almost certainly garner a hard no. But I bet you can't put all those toys back in the box. 
no way you'll be able to will have them whizzing round tidying like demons. Followed by a very indignant C. I told you I could. Q fake surprise from me. They're only 4 and 7. So I know this has got limited time. But so far works like a charm every time. Go to up the ante until you get them bet you can't cure cancer. Exactly. Nothing is a better motivator than telling someone you don't think they can do something. Split custody with my ex. When my son was around 10. He visited two weekends a month. I was waiting tables and didn't have a huge amount to spend. But he was so needy from divorce, and I'm not blaming him. It was ugly. He begged constantly for more when he was with me. Whatever more was. It didn't matter, he'd be eating ice cream cone and begging for teriyaki. I finally realized that he just felt empty. And getting more whatever from me wasn't filling him up. His next visit I handed him $100 in cash and told him it was our food fun budget for 3 days and 2 nights. And he was in charge of it. I bought him his own wallet to carry. We figured out how many times we were going to eat and what we were going to do. And he paid. He got to keep whatever money he had left, thought he was rich, then realized just how much everything cost. Well. Shoe on other foot then. If we had no money for food. We ate leftovers, and I didn't contribute more to pot. After a few weekends of running short or not getting something he actually wanted because he was foolish with funds. He started to really think about how to spend that money. He budgeted and kept to his budget. And a few times he actually went home with a little cash for his private stash. Many years later. He thanked me for this. It really changed the way he thought about money and love. I wouldn't call it reverse psychology. But rather good parenting. My 11 year now has $50 a month to buy clothes shoes and has to wash fold his own laundry. Are those $100 Nikes now the only ones you'll consider? Especially since you'll outgrow them in 3 months? And last year's jeans don't fit. So budget for that. Funny how things are no longer balled up on the floor or bought and never worn. We still cover underwear slash socks outerwear slash special occasion items. But back to school shopping is much more reasonable now. My mom tried that with my brother. Turns out he didn't care if his pants were several inches too short. Just kept them as they were and used the money for other things. My mom stopped that eventually and she couldn't have her son wearing sweatshirts that looked like they were for my youngest brother. The old tried and true. Bye. I'll see you later. As you pretend to leave the house whenever they refuse to put their shoes on works like a ducking charm. My 2 year old that was just hiding behind the recliner comes a running when she hears that phrase. The 7 year old has tried to call the bluff but. I just bluffed my way out to the car before she came running outside. You really were going to leave me? Guess not. Maybe next time. I roll. My in-laws tried this on my so when he was a kid. They were at a carnival and he didn't want to leave so they pulled the hole by. We're leaving without you bluff. He said bye back and then sprinted into a crowd. When I worked for Walmart saw a kid, 6 to 8 maybe, call his mom's bluff. She left. And the kid went into a panic. Mom of course only drove a lap around the parking lot but as soon as she got back. Kid hopped into the car and I like to think never did it again. Don't know if this counts. But. At my high school, private. Boys only, in the 1960s. They made a big deal about how long your hair was. And would occasionally order a boy to go home and get a haircut. I thought it was stupid. Until years later. A master confided to me at a reunion that the policy was deliberate. The school figured we'd spend so much energy rebelling about hair length. That we would ignore other aspects of teenage rebellion. Not. Surprisingly. They were mostly right. Damn. That's smart. Ro. Oh they don't like long hair? I'll show them. I'll grow my hair out as long what? No I don't want to go party. I gotta try out this horse shampoo. When I was in 5th grade. I won the dare medal and got to speak at dare graduation. When I showed my mom the medal. She laughed and said. Oh. That's cute. We'll see how you feel about drugs in high school. That pissed me off to no end. So I never did drugs. Just to prove my mom wrong. 
or mom was just really cool and letting you know. The silly mom routine. My kid, and a few other kids I've known, would balk at getting ready to go. I'd grab their clothes and say, well, if you won't put on your clothes, I guess I'll put on your clothes. Cute shirt. By the way, does it go on my foot? No. Does it go on my head? No. IT goes on ME. Oh. That's right. Thanks. So. It must go on your legs. Right? No. I just can't figure this out. Where does this adorable shirt go? Kid grabs shirt and puts it on. On my tummy. Silly mom. Oh. Thank you so much. Now what about these pants? Shirts go on tummies. So, the pants go on the tummy. Two. Right? No. I would also do things like hand the kid my keys and say. Alright. You're driving. I'll sit in the booster seat in back. Attempt to feed the kid by putting a spoon up to his ear or his belly button. And attempt to put away his toys in the refrigerator. Warning. That game is too funny. There is a risk they're going to refuse to get dressed just to play it. I tried it with my boys. One ended up with pants on his head because he thought it was funny. I don't know if it was truly reverse psychology. Or an exhausted response out of desperation. We were in Lujne the grocery store checking out. Kid was 3. And the meltdown started. And quickly became an on the floor tantrum. I looked down and said. Louder than normal. But not yelling. Where is your mother? We need to find your mom. She was startled. Because I am her mom. And confused. But the tantrum ended quickly. And with hugs. If you can't console them. Confuse them. My wife was a trauma therapist for some time and she's buller when it comes to preteen mind duckery. Our nephew was bullying in the backseat once because he'd finished his soda. He wanted a sip of his sister's and she wouldn't let him. My wife just asked him point blank does crying make you feel better. He got a real inquisitive look on his face and almost immediately calmed down. I was just as flabbergasted as he was. Took my 3 year old son to one of those doctor's visits where he was going to get a shot. He was worried about the shot on the whole drive over. Almost to the point of tears. We get to the doctor's office and a nurse subtly lets me know that my son is not just scheduled for one shot. But 5 of them in the same visit. I turn to my son with an exaggerated smile and tell him. Good news. They figured out how to take that one big shot you were going to get and instead break it up into these five little tiny shots so it won't hurt nearly as much. You could see the relief wash over his face. He stopped squirming and relaxed completely. He took the first shot and even smiled and said it's true. The small ones don't hurt. We actually made it through the third shot before the effect wore off and reality kicked in. Still. I counted it as a victory. One day when I was going to the doctor my dad told me I was going to get 3 shots. And he said it just to mess with me. I was about 9 and I could handle shots, big cry, but I was still a little nervous because he was giggling like he was telling a joke. I kept telling him there was no way I would ever get 3 shots at once. One shot makes me cry a lot so why would they give me 3? He gave up and was like they actually wouldn't give you that many at once so you'll be fine. Well we went to the dock and the nurse said I was due for 3 shots. I watched the color drain out of my dad's face. That was the only time they've ever had 2 nurses hold me down while another nurse administered the shot. I was livid to say the least. Oh no I laughed so hard at this. Poor you, and your dad lol. Wanted to name my boat. Anything I would think of was dismissed as stupid by my 13 year old son. After deciding on a name. I confided to a male friend my son liked. Made my friend suggest the name as though it was his idea. My son thought the name was perfect. Done. Teenagers are duckin' stupid. Source. Was a duckin' stupid teenager. Can confirm. Source. I'm a stupid duckin' teenager. My wife used to tell the kids that I didn't want them to try new things because I didn't want to share it with them. But sometimes they'd like it and I'd make a big deal out of it about having to share with them. Sometimes they'd say. This one is all yours dad. You win some. You lose some. 
but at least they would typically try things this way. When my children were younger, I'd say hey if you do, insert your, then I'll buy you dinner tonight. They would get all excited and then go do the chore. Afterwards they'd say, wait, you buy me dinner every night. Mum had sworn a bit around the house. When for, while out at the supermarket, I said the F word really loudly, very quickly and intently. She asked if I had just said truck and said that was a bad word and not to ever say truck like that again. I thought that was the bad word so used that when being naughty. When my niece was 5, she thought that word shoot, as in oh shoot, was a bad word. She chastised her dad whenever he said it around her. He'd apologize. I remember when she said shoot around me and she thought she was in trouble. I was 8 or so and some kid snitched on me for saying shoot and I got in trouble for it. I'm still bitter. My dad used to play a game to see who could match and fold the most laundry he never once won. Oh he was winning alright. My child was reluctant when it came to putting away toys. However he loves time tasks and is very competitive. I'd instruct my child to put away all the red toys as fast as possible. Then blue. Then green. Etc. Toys away. Something similar. My friend's daughter. If you race her or say I bet I can get ready for bed faster than you shall immediately stop pitching a fit and get changed brush teeth clean up her toys etc. My friend fakes like he is also getting ready for bed. So she wins every time. I'll get you next time. He says. And it always works. She also turned 6 today so I dk how long it will last. It seemed like the minute my son realized he was going through puberty. He developed a need to show everyone how strong he was. Usually by carrying things. Now. My son was a rather small. Wiry. Hyperkinetic kid. Not at all a football player or weightlifter type. Yet I noticed starting when he was around 13 that if something heavy or heavy-ish needed moving, he was always right there, with a need to show he could do it. I took full advantage. I don't think I lifted anything heavier than my person till he moved out. All I had to do was mention that I was going to put X in Y place, put the suitcases in the car for vacation, carry that gigantic load of laundry upstairs, etc and pretend like it was too heavy for me and he would appear as if summoned from the universe to do it for me. The reverse psychology aspect was my saying oh my. That looks heavy. And him proving to me that no it's not. I've always been raised to help where I could. So most of the time when I hear something that needs carrying I do it. My mother has always struggled with her weight which made it hard for her to walk around with anything remotely heavy. So I'd always help her. My grandmother who. In all the time I've known her. Has always weighed like 50 kilos. Also had a problem lifting heavy stuff. So whenever I could help I did. It's always nice to be able to help. But I'd never let them think that I helped because I thought they were incapable. I always just bragged really loudly and say stuff like. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Coming through to make it seem like I just wanted to show off lol. Edit. Thank you for the gold kind stranger. I don't know what this does but it does put a smile on my face. Best comment of the day. When my oldest daughter would be beyond reason and crying one day I asked her, what color are your wings? She was maybe 2 or 3. She immediately froze looked confused and said what wings? I said your special fairy wings the ones I can see but I can't make out all the colors can you help me? She liked the idea of having wings and immediately worked with me on this. And from then on when I saw her going into a meltdown I would ask her what color are your wings today. Worked 4 years still sometimes does as an adult. This did not work on my younger daughter she is very literal. However the argument over whether or not she might have wings only I can see did worked only so many times.